a busy time here for us, so we have some folks floating in and out, but I do want to go around the room quickly to let you know some of the voices that might also be on. We have Amy Nye here. She's our partnerships manager. Uh, I think you can probably get a lot of emails from her. And also we have Gabriella Schneider, our communications director, joining us here today. Um, and so I guess we'll get started. So it's Friday, November 2nd. On November 6th, we have Election Day. And you know, throughout this whole election time here, the Sunlight Foundation has been following the money, looking at how the campaigns are spending money, how outside groups are spending their money. And we've been building the tools to get you um, hopefully ready, prepared, and allow you to do um, some in-depth reporting and some immediate reporting on what's been happening. So today we're going to really be looking at the impact of the outside money, um, sharing with you some quick links for what you can hopefully find and use uh, leading up to Tuesday's results. So a little overview at first. As we've all known, this is a big money election. Um, what you see on the screen right now is a little rundown for what the campaigns have reported so far. Um, the money, just want to make a quick note, quick note, the two bullet points for the Obama campaign and the Romney campaign are um, from Federal Election Commission reports as aggregated by the Center for Responsive Politics. So this is through, um, through mid-October, the Obama campaign has raised $632 million and spent $540 million. The Romney campaign has raised $389 million and spent $336 million. Um, not included on here is a look at what the party committees, the RNC, the DNC, and the campaign's joint fundraising committees, um, like the Obama Victory Fund and the Romney Victory Fund, just want to let you know the Sunlight Foundation has been reviewing those numbers quite a bit. Um, our editorial director, Bill Allison, has done some great pieces looking at the cash advantage the Democrats have had pretty much the entire election. Um, and I'm happy to share those links with you during this call or afterwards. And you can find all this reporting at our elections website. And that is at the bottom of your screen there, sunlightfoundation.com slash elections 2012. But in looking at the big money, what we're going to be focusing on, as I mentioned, are the super PACs, the party committees, the issue groups, the C4s, the C6s, the unions, and how they're setting outside spending records. Sunlight Foundation's Follow the Unlimited Money Tracker has looked at more than 1.3 billion, that's with a B, not M as it is on your screen, in independent expenditures and electioneering communications. Um, in 2010, during the midterms, we only saw $454 million. Um, reaching the billion dollar mark, we were expecting it, but it happened sooner than we thought. It was only a few weeks ago. And just this um, sheer amount of money is why we're taking um, a lot of time and really focusing on resources on who is giving this money. So let's move ahead to outside spending and congressional campaigns. As we've noted time and time again, the impact of this outside money is unprecedented. In 2010, during the congressional midterms, we had $454 million in reported spending by outside groups. 2010 was the first time that we had super PACs. It was the, um, uh, a lot of the impact, of all the results, excuse me, from the Citizens United ruling by the Supreme Court and the Speech Now case, um, which really created the term super PAC, these in independent expenditure only committees. Um, in 2010, 126 million of that was by dark money groups. That is nonprofits, unions, um, C6s like the Chamber of Commerce and other groups that don't disclose their donors. But turning attention to 2012, this year, we track more than $554.2 million so far for outside spending in House and Senate races. On our Follow the Unlimited Money site, we actually have some really great charts that show sort of the immense buildup and spending by these outside groups. And you can see the URL on the top of the screen. It is kind of long. Um, you can also access these at followtheunlimitedmoney.com. 
what we're seeing in front of you is looking at the rise of outside money in Senate races. Um, we can see that uh, outside money supporting a Republican is higher uh, than it is for our Democrat, from for the Democrats, excuse me. So 150 million for um, backing Republicans and 134 million backing Democrats. The month of October has really been the big jumping point for a lot of this outside money. Um, you know, in since October 1st, we have been seeing records of $100 million spent for a week, per week. And actually in the past week, it has been $210 million. It also is good to note that the money reflected in follow the unlimited money, all these aggregated totals, are for both primary and general election spending. The next slide is a look at uh, outside money in house races. You can really see that as soon as September 1st hit, all the money for house spending really, really started ramping up. Um, in general election independent expenditures, we see that 147 million is going to back Republicans and 122 million is being backed to Democrats. We're gonna take a little closer look at both House spending and Senate spending using an analysis the Sunlight Foundation published last week. This is all current figures as of yesterday afternoon. So we have the top five House races with independent expenditures. At the top of the list is the Pennsylvania 12th, 12th race with, uh, Mark, with Mark Kritz, the Democrat, and Roth is for the Republican, has $9.8 million spent so far. The Ohio 16 race has $9.6 million spent so far. The Minnesota 8 race, which is actually a three-way race, has $8.9 million spent in outside money so far. Illinois 17th has $8.8 million. And the California 52nd race has $8.3 million. You can find all this information on Follow the, Follow the Unlimited Money under the Races tab. It's going to always be the highest, highest independent expenditures at the top. So you will see presidential up there. You will see Senate races up there, which we'll get to a minute. But you can also sort every column on that page or find it. So you can easily find on Follow the Unlimited Money any uh, congressional race that you might be covering or wanting to know um, sort of what is, what's the money picture look like? How has it changed um, over the course of the year? We published an analysis last week looking at house spending trends in terms of outside money. And we found that outside spending has topped 3 million in 32 congressional race and 32 house races and over 1 million in 57 of the congressional house races happening right now. Republicans are getting a third of their outside money from non-super PAC, non-party groups. That is groups like Crossroads GPS and other 501c4 nonprofits that do not disclose their donors. But we're also seeing in house races that the congressional campaign committees, uh, the DC, the DCCC and the NRCC, excuse me, that is a typo there, spending um, in their races. So the DCCC is spending more than $48 million in 86 races, and the NRCC is spending $51 million, $55 million in nearly 50 races. This is uh, figures from a week ago, so these numbers are higher than they are right now, and you can see the latest on Follow the Unlimited Money. Part of this analysis by our senior, senior fellow Lee Drutman looked at the ratios um, of how much money in a congressional race was going to back the Republican candidate versus the Democratic candidate. And you can see here um, a little quartz graph of how those spending ratios happened. Um, this is all available on our elections hub page at election, sunlightfoundation.com slash elections 2012. And we're also happy to share with this um, afterwards and we'll have a whole list of URLs at the end of the um, webinar. So this is a good look of just how the races were spread out for the House races so far in outside money. Turning your attention back to the Senate, this is as of yesterday evening, the top five Senate races with outside spending happening, independent expenditures. We have the Virginia Senate race at $47.8 million, 
the Wisconsin Senate race at $41.1 million, the Ohio Senate race at $33.2 million, the Indiana Senate race at $28.1 million, and the Nevada Senate race at $26.4 million. This is coming directly from Father Limited Money. And if you want to take a closer look of what groups are giving to these candidates and how this money, what, it's, what they're spending on, whether it be media buys or canvassing and whatnot, that's all available on the link at the top of the page. Just like with the House races, last week we looked at Senate um, outside money trends. And we found three big points that as with the House, Republicans are getting more than half their outside money from non-party, non-super PAC groups. The Democrats still get a plurality of their outside money from the Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee, but just, just a little bit, almost there. And then super PACs are actually less than one third of the reported outside money in the Senate. So a lot of the group is being spent by the Congressional Campaign Committees and um, non-party groups. This is a look at Senate spending trends, um, basically in going down by the top 10 uh, Senate races. And the colors coordinating look at how they are uh, shaded, whether it's a, by a super PAC, um, by a Republican Party Committee, Democrat Party Committee, and such. Uh, the spending is actually through October 23rd, as it's noted at the top. So these figures have increased over the past week and a half. I'm going to pause here a minute and see if anyone has any questions looking at outside spending in congressional races before we move on to some dark money figures. If you have a question, you can press star seven on your keypad uh, to ask it over the phone, or you can use the chat window and we will respond. My question is whether your uh, tally for Senate spending includes the electioneering activity when you have a number like 40, 40, uh, $1.2 million for the U.S. Senate race. Is that the total of the uh, independent expenses, including the electioneering activity, or not including? That is not including electioneering um, activity. Uh, our analysis that we published on October 24th was just looking at independent expenditures made. On Fatherly Unlimited Money, though, and I'm actually going to share my screen here for one moment. Let's see if this works. There we go. Um, I am actually going to pull up our Follow the Unlimited Money page, and you can see, oops, yeah, it's going to take a moment there to load, as it we have a lot of content there that um, on following limited money, you'll be able to see the electioneering communications um, that are made in these races. Uh, one trend we are seeing this year is that a lot of groups, um, for example, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, that traditionally did spend, um, made, spend made electioneering communications, actually just made independent expenditures, which did have to be reported to the FEC. Um, what you're seeing now is actually a default page. It'll be switching to the races tab momentarily. Um, so for instance, the Virginia Senate race, uh, that $48 million in outside spending to date, they've had zero in reported electioneering communications. Whereas the Wisconsin Senate race at $41.4 million has had $1.8 million in electioneering communications. And you can see that um, in the third row on the website. Um, everything on Follow the Unlimited Money is hyperlinked. So if you see it in blue, click on it and you'll get more information. Um, I will also say that on Follow the Unlimited Money, in the green bar on the left-hand side, you can see a download data um, option. That's gonna allow you to download CSV files of all independent expenditures, all electioneering communications, and even when you're in within a particular campaign and race, you can download just the money being spent on those candidates for everything we have on record. And it's a really great resource to have if you need to do any numbers crunching, um, if you wanna create any data, um, any graphics, any charts and such, it's a nice um, 
nice resource to have. Go back to here. Um, as we switch the screen back, I uh, wanted to know if there's any other questions on congressional spending. Well, we'll go back to, uh, now we're moving on to dark money. This is actually going to be findings from an analysis the Sunlight Foundation just published today on our blog, and it was written by Lee Drutman, uh, who is our senior fellow uh, in coordination with uh, the rest of his data team and our graphics team. I want to do a quick definition of when we say dark money, what does that mean? Um, we define dark money as outside groups that do not disclose their donors and are only required to disclose their congressional race spending within 60 days of House and Senate elections and their presidential race spending following the national party conventions. The numbers that we'll be using here are general, spend, general election spending only, so they are not including primary race numbers. So our analysis from today found $213 million in dark money spending through November 1st. There are 110 dark money groups that we found, and they spent $172.4 million, or 87%, backing Republican candidates, and $35.7 million, or 19%, spent helping Democrats. Dark money represents 17% of the total $1.3 billion in outside money spent to date. And that $1.3 billion, as I mentioned earlier, is both general and primary election spending. In terms of the presidential race, dark money backing Mitt Romney and the GOP primary candidates is $54.3 million, and groups spent only $9.4 million supporting President Obama. So Republicans are definitely getting the bigger share of dark money. Trends from the analysis include who are the five biggest spenders. They are all pro-Republican groups. Crossroads GPS has $66.9 million in dark money spending. The US Chamber of Commerce spent $31.1 million Americans for Tax Reform spent $15.4 million. Americans for Job Security spent $12.5 million. And the American Future Fund spent $10.7 million. Of the top 10, only the League of Conservation Voters and Patriot Majority USA spent on behalf of Democrats. On the Sunlight blog, you will actually, both on the big analysis post, which is the first one available at the top of our page, and the link is shared um, in the chat window, you can also find the raw data for this. So for all 110 dark money groups, we break down in a table how much they spent, how much of their spending went to, Demo to congressional candidates, how much of their spending went to presidential candidates, and what is the share of pro-Democrat, pro-Republican money. There's a lot of data um, for you to sort through, and everything is in a table that you can either use within your desktop or download and open into Excel. Other dark money trends, including how they were spending on congressional races. We found 34 races, 12 Senate and 22 House, where dark money groups spent at least $1 million, the money heavily skewed towards Republicans. The top five Senate races with dark money is Virginia, with 19 million reported, Ohio, with 13.1 million reported, Nevada, with 11.7 million reported, Wisconsin, with 10.4 million, and the Montana Senate race, with 7.5. House races with dark money really align with some of the top spenders in total outside money, and that includes PA-12 with 3.3 million, Ohio's 6th Congressional District with 3.2 million, California 10 with 2.6 million, Minnesota 8 with 2.5 million, and Michigan's 1st with 2.3 million. Like the top dark money groups and what they're spending, we actually have also the raw data available for who is giving, what dark money groups are giving to these congressional races. You can find that all on our blog. 
Our analysis today also includes a number of interactive charts that details our findings. The one here is our breakdown of dark money spending by target. Red is for House spending, blue is for Senate spending, and blue, excuse me, yellow is for Senate spending, and blue is for presidential spending. You can, uh, anytime when you view this on our blog, just roll over anywhere on the bar graph and it will show you the breakdown of what the final totals were. These numbers are all through November 1st. Before we move on to the next section, happy to take any questions um, or any sort of dig deeper uh, information you're looking for on dark money trends this election. Oh, we won't pause for too long. Um, so we're gonna move on to the third part of today's webinar, and that is looking at political ad files. Um, in August, the Sunlight Foundation launched a brand new website called Political Ad Sleuth, and it's found at politicaladsleuth.com. What it is is a database of political ad files for the top 50 US media markets and the ABC, CBS, NBC, and Fox affiliates in those markets. It's a digitized version of a database that the Federal Communications Commission has at, uh, I believe it's stations.fcc.gov. And um, this is looking at ad files. This is sometimes the very first um, way to find out how a dark money group is spending their cash and trying to influence the election. So by ad files, we mean it's the campaign and issue group media buys, their contracts with the station, their intention to buy political airtime, such as I'm a candidate running for office, they have to fill out a form, and any amendments to those documents a TV station has on record. These are really great resources to have for reporters because they primarily show when an ad's run, how much they cost. But because we're only showing the volume of files a station has, Political Ad Sleuth works as a heat map of source. Every record on Political Ad Sleuth either includes an embed of the actual file itself or a link to view it on the FCC database. So when you see numbers on Political Ad Sleuth, such as like 350 you know, house ads for a Pennsylvania race, that's actually not the number of media buys, it's the number of files we have in our database. You can click through those files and plug in, and ex I should rather say extract, how much airtime a campaign bought and how much it cost. But we're just really using AdSooth right now as a heat map. Here's a look at the top five media markets with the most files in our database as of yesterday. Political AdSooth is since August 2nd, 2012. So we see that the Las Vegas media market has nearly uh, 3,500 ad filings to date. Um, they have more non-candidate issue ads than anything else. And the rows, uh, the columns continue on breaking down by number of ad files for a presidential campaign. That's the ones for Obama and Romney, ad files for Senate campaign, ad files for U.S. House races, as well as ad files for state, uh, state and local races. So if there's a big mayoral campaign happening uh, where you are, you can also find that information in Political Ad Sleuth. Uh, going down the top TV markets, Orlando, Florida is number two with ad files. Norfolk, Virginia is number three. West Palm Beach, Florida is number uh, four for total number of ad files in our database. And Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania is number five. These numbers change hourly. Uh, we pull the information directly from the FCC database. So you will see these numbers change um, pretty much on the hour when you visit the URL at the top of the screen. Oops, jumped ahead too much. In fact, I'm gonna stay on Political Ad Sleuth for just one minute here. Um, one thing to also note on Political Ad Sleuth is it is part of a crowdsourcing project we are working on with Free Press. Um, we had a national data happy hour last week and was able to extract information from these ad files and manually enter it into our database. So any record you view on Political Ad Sleuth, you have the ability to um, look at 
the number of media buys and record them into our database. It's our goal to have this not just be digitized files from the FCC. We really want to be able to create some structured data. So you don't have to buy um, information from CMAG Hantar. You can easily search on a publicly free available website um, who is buying airtime in uh, these media markets. We're also hoping to expand it beyond just the top 50 media markets and are encouraging um, reporters, uh, volunteers, student journalists to go to their local stations, uh, get these political ad files, scan them, and upload them into our Ad Sleuth database. How to do this is all available on the website, and we really hope that should things quiet down after the election, that people take the time to help us make this site even better. Our tool, two main outside money tools, Follow the Unlimited Money and Political Ad Sleuth, are all powered by real-time data. Um, and as we get down to the wire here, and everyone has deadlines, and we're trying to get the most recent information available, these two sites are really great for that. On Follow the Unlimited Money, our independent expenditures information is updated hourly. In the top right-hand corner of the screen, you will see when when's the data's most freshest. So it updates usually about on the hour, on the half hour. Um, sometimes it might be closer to the hour mark. Any of the download information, downloadable files from Falling Limited Money, these CSV files, are updated hourly. So if you download something at 8 o'clock in the morning, uh, there's a good chance that before your 4 o'clock deadline, the information has changed. So we do encourage people to note um, what data set they're using. We try to do that the best we can here, too. We also provide on Falling Limited Money uh, contributions made to super PACs. Um, and that information is current through October 17th, the most recent disclosures with the FEC. Um, you can download that file under our Download Data button. Um, and that's all sortable, so you can see who is giving to what super PACs. On the site itself, you can easily search it. Um, in the search window, just plug in a super PAC name, a C4 name, or even a candidate to easily find the information you're looking for on the site. On Political Ad Sleuth, as I mentioned, the ads, ad files are updated hourly. So those figures you will see on the recent DMA page will all be there. Also on the home page of Political Ad Sleuth at the bottom of the page, you can view the most recent files as they're coming in. And that's constantly uploaded, um, excuse me, constantly updated. You can also download a CSV of all the files in our database on Political Ad Sleuth. That CSV file will show you what market it aired in, um, who bought the ad, the advertiser, as well as a link to the original PDF in the FCC database. The one of the nice features of Political Ad Sleuth is you can easily search by advertiser or a time period. Um, and then there's some great filtering options as well. And I'm going to go back and share my screen so I can uh, possibly show that section of Political Ad Sleuth. So I apologize, it takes a little bit of time to chug through um, and pull up our screens. But on politicaladsleuth.com, the search feature has uh, filtering options. So if you are want to narrow down on, um, on a particular market, it's a really easy thing to do. Um, so in the top right hand corner, I am actually going to do a search for Restore Our Future which is a Republican super PAC. And I'm actually going to press search. For when you restore our future, you'll see a um, sort of rundown on the left-hand side. And you can see what's in our database and what's not in our database versus need entry, summarize, not loaded. Um, for the big super PACs, Restore Our Future, Priorities USA Action, as well as the big campaigns, Obama, Romney, et cetera, um, we automatically have their advertiser information in our database. So it's really easy to find who are the big spenders. 
if you need a, just a quick overview of what they're spending, what their ad files are in your state, you can see that on the left-hand side under uh, top results and state. You can also use the drop-down menu to pick a particular state if they're not one of the big spenders. You can also get an overview of the type of ads that are being spent and who the advertiser is. Um, you can also sort it by date if you only want to see the ad files available in our database. Say, for instance, since today, you can easily press search and it will show up. So I encourage um, to start with this site. We do know in terms of how these outside groups are spending their money, they're going to be reporting their information to the local TV stations before they have to report anything with the Federal Elections Commission. Media buys happen before um, independent expenditure reports. So this is really a great first line of reporting defense. So we're going to go back to our slides. And look at what's now happening with Election Day and beyond. So using this real-time data, using these resources, we have you can use follow the unlimited money to see the impact of outside money in congressional races as the results come in. Um, Another thing to do post-election day is to review the political ad files and assist with data entry on our political ad sleuth site to make it as robust as possible. Um, another site we have is politicalpartytime.org. Um, that is our collection of congressional and presidential fundraiser invites happening around the country. Um, we'll have a lot of information on, polit on political party time about debt retirement fundraisers and other events happening during the lame duck congress. It's always a great resource to check out and all of that information is easily searchable by a candidate, by a PAC, by a leadership group, etc. And as always, the media and press team here, we're happy to be of assistance. Whether it is, um, you know, needing help using one of our tools, wanting a quote to talk to one of our experts here on staff, um, customizing a data set, we really um, understand this is, this is really great work that everyone is doing, and we want to be um, as, of, as of help as possible. So before we conclude today, I'm going to share resources that we discussed. Um, all this information is going to be shared with participants. Afterwards, you'll get a link to the archive. Um, as it's available, also available on our political, um, excuse me, I, politic, politics on the brain on our Sunlight Academy training site, which is an archive for all the webinars we've had over the past month. So we looked at today our um, Elections Hub homepage, which has some really great quick links and facts and figures on how the money is impacting the elections. We looked at how outside groups are spending their money using follow me limited money. We reviewed our outside uh, spending uh, analysis, analyses of House and Senate races. We looked at our brand new dark money analysis and checked out Political Ad Sleuth. A few resources that we didn't really quite go over, um, but I want to make sure people know about, is our ad hoc mobile app. We launched this a few weeks ago, and what it is, it's a um, mobile app for iPhones and Android devices that easily identifies a political ad when you hear it on the radio, see it on television, or even watch one online. It uses audio fingerprint technology. So you hold your phone to your speaker or up towards your TV, and within 30 seconds, it lets you know who bought the ad, what is their campaign finance profile, and links to more information about the ad, who, um, who donated to that group, and if it's among our most popular ads um, among our app users. We built a brand new database for this. Um, so we have a great collection of political ads that you can also search for online at adhoc.sunlightfoundation.com. It's a free app. Every Friday this past month, we've also been doing quick video recaps of the week in political money spending. You can see those on our blog or on our YouTube page. Um, this is some really great, you know, two minute, 90 second clips of what you need to know 
um, in the week behind and the week ahead. Uh, nice things to tweet about, um, to post on blogs, um, and to share uh, on your social networks. We also have a plugin for Gmail called Inbox Influence. What this does is it will identify um, the political giving um, of who sends, your, who sends you email. So if you're getting a lot of emails from um, you know, campaign surrogates or issue groups, it will give you within your Gmail window a snapshot of their political giving and influence history. It's a really cool thing to check out. And we also have our ever popular Politoops Twitter archive for politicians. It shows uh, when politicians have deleted their tweets. It covers the official cam campaign accounts for members of Congress, um, both Obama and Romney. And we also have the campaign accounts for members of Congress and their challengers, as well as United States governors. Um, we have the ability, if you have a Twitter account you want us to follow on Politwhoops, there's an ability to leave feedback. You can also easily search by just Republicans or Democrats position they serve, whether it be House of Representatives members or governors, it's a really great site to check out. And there are new oops, twoops every single day. Um, really neat, neat way to see how they're using social media to craft their messaging. So between um, some of our flagship sites and our additional resources, we hope the Sunlight Foundation um, can help you. Uh, cover the elections. Hope we help, have helped you cover uh, money and politics this year. And uh, we're going to give some time for Q&A. Um, as always, you can press star seven and use the chat window. And we're uh, happy to have continue this conversation. Going back to your uh, reported totals for outside spending, why would there be discrepancies between the number that you would report, say, for a congressional race and what, and what was reported by the Center for Responsive Politics on Open Secret. How, why might those numbers not be the same? Uh, we have a different method, not different methodology, but we count different groups. So our outside spending figures includes four main groups. That is super PACs. That is congressional campaign committees. It includes uh, unions. It includes uh, nonprofit organizations, uh, 501c4s, issue groups. It also includes C6 organizations. And our outside spending figure also includes individuals making independent expenditures. And that a good example of that is Foster Fries. He uh, you know, gave a lot of money in, to, in support of Rick Santorum during the GOP primaries. And on our site, he did not have a super PAC. He did not give it to another group. It is his own money. Um, so there you actually see some individuals making independent expenditures on our site. Um, we do have a methodology page. And on our overview page on Follow the Unlimited Money, we actually do a breakdown by, by these different types of outside groups. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a question online. This is Amy uh, from Jamie who wants to find out about non-candidate issue spending in my local area, uh, regardless of who's spending, and wanted to know how they can get that information on Political Ad Sleuth. And that's actually uh, an easy thing to do because you can just open Political Ad Sleuth and there's a search box in the top right hand corner. It's actually a very robust search. Um, so you can put in, and I just did it right now for non-candidate issue, and, and then you can just sort by state on the left hand side, and then that will be um, you know, it, it also has the top 10 results. So for, for instance, if you're, you know, interested in non-candidate um, issue ads and, and then you're interested in marriage issues, for instance, you can also put that in there and you can search and you'll see there is a number of ads that were purchased. It's good to note though, for political ad sleuth, um, the big majority of the information available on the site, those political ad files, are only for the top 50 media markets. We do have some uh, ad files for stations not in the top 50 markets that has been provided by our volunteers or staff here on our staff here at Sunlight. But um, I was speaking to a reporter from Buffalo and I felt really bad for them because they are market number 51. Mm -hmm. 
So, um, but Amy is right, we do provide good state overviews. So if you are living in a state covering uh, elections in a state that has more than one uh, market uh, in the top 50, you can also get a good overview of how they're spending um, across the area or region. Um, as we're waiting to see if anyone else has any further questions, I uh, just want to let people know that this is not the conclusion of Sunlight's uh, political uh, money uh, reporting. On Monday, uh, we will have a new analysis before the election. On Tuesday, ele on, uh, on uh, election day, we'll have a little rundown of what are the big numbers that we saw uh, so far this year. And as the polls come, as the results come in, we'll be looking at trends of how the impact of outside money in congressional races. We'll see was how, what was the impact of dark money, how it was spending, how did it impact the results, and more down the line. So uh, it's not going to be quiet here for a while. And I encourage you to continue to follow us on our blog, on our social media accounts, um, I see it was just shared via chat. That is my email address. Feel free to email me. I don't mind getting emails. Uh, and don't ever apologize. This is a busy time for all of us. And we're here to really um, help, help answer any questions that people have. Um, so I want to thank you for joining us today. Please keep an eye out for um, the archive of this webinar. Um, it will be sent today. And also uh, keep in mind that this is part of our Sunlight Academy training series. There's lots of information on, uh, tra on our Sunlight Academy site. We're also always happy to do one-on-one -on -one trainings, uh, meeting with people in their offices, setting up you know, webinars for a particular reporting team. Um, we can also, you know, we're here to, I said, I've said this a lot, help you out and happy to even customize our trainings for your needs. And with that, We'll say uh, goodbye and good afternoon and um, hope to talk to people soon.